Hey you guys, welcome to My Table 3. My name is Carrie, and if you're new here, thanks for joining. Um, I use this channel to go alongside my blog, MyTable3.com, uh, to document recipes and things that I use along my weight loss journey on the Trim Healthy Mama uh, diet. So today I thought I would share with you guys a couple of recipes that me and my family enjoy to uh, use, especially with winter squash. So today I'm gonna show you three kinds of squash and three ways you can use them, two E meals, two E sides for your meals, and one with spaghetti squash that we love. So let's get in the kitchen. I'm already in the kitchen, but let's get started and show you how I like to make those winter squash. Okay, today we are gonna talk about winter squash and um, we have acorn squash and butternut squash, which are co both considered a uh, winter squash. Now these, uh, the spaghetti squash, I'm not real sure if it's considered winter squash, but it does uh, last for a long time like these two do. So I think it falls into winter squash, but hey, I may be wrong. But anyway, let's talk about these three. Uh, this one is an acorn squash. <clears throat> It is a winter squash, I know. Uh, it is a winter squash, not because they grow them in winter, but just a fun fact, because they are hardy and they will last. So you can grow them in the uh, summer and they will last all winter if you store them in a cool, dry place and then they'll last for a really long time. Now the acorn squash is higher in carb, so it's not a low carb uh, treat. I think the index, the... Um, what do they call it? The blood sugar index. Oh, I've lost my train of thought. But anyway, this has about the most, this has an effect on blood sugar about like a sweet potato, I believe, as well as this one. Uh, but these fit into a Trim Healthy Mama. There's another squash. <laughs> but um, these fit into Trim Healthy Mama E, as well as these fit into a Trim Healthy Mama E. And then our spaghetti squash, it is lower in carb and good for S meals and low carbers that are looking for pasta alternatives. So this would be an FP, I believe, and you could use it for S or E meals. Um, so these are three of our favorites. We eat these a lot. These two in our E meals, these in our E and our S meals, mostly S. Um, so yeah, and we were fortunate this year, we tried a little garden and we were able to grow some butternut squash so I'm really excited about those and I'm going to show you some recipes uh, now in this video for the butternut squash here the acorn squash as well as the spaghetti squash so just to peek this one that I'm going to be doing for the acorn squash uh, will be a crossover and it's one I do around Thanksgiving and if you're not familiar with the term crossover if you follow the term healthy mama diet it is higher in fat and higher in carbs so it is considered a crossover meal. And this recipe that I'm gonna do is like, it is an adaptation of a Pioneer Woman recipe that we fell in love with. And of course, it has real sugar uh, in her recipe and we don't eat real sugar, so we're gonna do it with um, a swerve brown sugar. And so it has butter, lots of butter, so that makes this an e-meal because it is higher in carbs and fat so that's gonna, i'm sorry not an email but a crossover for trim healthy mama uh, which is okay for thanksgiving because you know uh you can still eat on plan because according to trim healthy mama crossovers are on plan so healthy ingredients no sugar added no off-plan ingredients you're just going to mix your fuels a little bit because of the higher carb squash and the butter that's going to be in there so the butternut squash i'm just going to show you how i our favorite way to eat it which is a simple roast uh, and I'll show you that. And then with our spaghetti squash, I have showed you guys the recipe before, which is my creamy sausage and pepper casserole, where I steam this, and then I put this in a casserole with a creamy sauce, some peppers and onions, and uh, some ki beef kielbasa sausages. So I'm not sure I'll show you that recipe again, but I will show a picture and put the link below. I may just focus on these two, and then, I'm sorry if it's, my camera's having Trouble keeping up with me. So I'll show you the two recipes in this video for the butternut squash and the acorn squash. And then I will link below and show a picture of this recipe that I like so much. So there you have it. The three squash that I'm going to be showing you more about in this video. And let's get to it. 
All right, guys, so the first one I'm going to show you is this butternut squash. Again, we grew some of these in our garden, so super excited because it's one of our favorites. Uh, this is going to be a Trim Healthy Mama E side um, for the holidays. This would make a great E um, side dish for Thanksgiving or Christmas or just an everyday E meal. Again, if, you're low, if you follow low carb or keto, this may not be... A vegetable or a recipe for you because it is higher in carbs uh it, so it's pretty starchy but on term healthy mama this will fall into an e category you just have to watch your fat keep it under five uh grams for your meal so for this whole um recipe that i'm going to use i am going to use a tablespoon of coconut oil over the whole recipe that, but this will make several servings for our small family of three so i'm going to show you first how you how it looks when you cut it off this one's really and juicy so it has just about uh i call it guts <laughs> but that's not very um uh classy sounding but anyway these are the innards the seeds like a pumpkin real stringy and stuff and this is what it looks like after you hollow it and a trick for hollowing out these squash as well as these is a large ice cream scoop because it fits right in and we'll scoop it right out you can see those are removed they're in the shape um i don't know if i can show you since i'm filming but i'll show you uh, this is what it looks like when I use that. You just go right in and it scoops right out. So I'm going to clean these out. And then you can see I haven't peeled them yet because they get really slimy or, well, kind of sticky and slippery. So I didn't want to use my knife uh, while they're real slippery and cut myself because they are, they tend to be a very firm squash. So sometimes hard to cut. Um, these that we grew were not as hard as some of the ones you buy in the grocery store so it cut pretty good but again i do not peel them until after i've got them cut and cleaned and then i'll take a vegetable peeler just real simple and peel them off and then i will cube them in about one inch cubes and i will come back and show you what it looks like after i've got these cubed up in in my bowl over here all right guys so here is the butternut squash i have all cut up in cubes uh, so you can tell it made a lot. Now, let me tell you one thing about the, let me see if it'll focus. The butternut squash is, it will cook down. So if you, this looks like a lot and it will serve, it will be several portions for each one of us, but, or a couple of portions for each one of us uh, in an email. But this will cook down. It is a lot of water in this squash, so it will cook down. Um, so just keep in mind, when you're making for a crowd, you may need to get a couple of big ones. Um, cause it will cook down as we, cause we're going to cook it for a long time in the oven on a um, higher heat so that it will cook down. Now I thought I would go ahead. These are the guts <laughs> or the seeds and the pulp and the peeling. I thought I'd go ahead and show you the butternut squash and how I get that done since I'm here with the cutting board and a knife. So this is what the butternut squash. No, I'm totally wrong guys. The acorn squash. This is the butternut. This is acorn. And again, it is a higher carb starchy squash. So it is a trim healthy mama E. Um, so you need to watch your fats and your meals when you watch when you eat these. But this is what it looks like. And so I'm going to show you. You cut it open and it's similar to the pumpkin and the other squash. So it has the seeds um, and the guts <laughs> or this fibrous texture things. Um, and you can see there that the tip I gave you about the ice cream scoop works wonderful there too. Here's what they look like. You can see I can use the ice cream scoop. It comes right out. So really easy. This is how I've cut. This is how you cut these. And these are again very hard. So be very cautious um, when you're using a sharp knife to cut them because it takes a little bit of muscle power. So here's what it looks like. And here's how I slice those. And you can see the convenient thing about the acorn squash is it has what I call natural knife <laughs> grooves here. So there is how you just cut those along those grooves. And it's easier too in those grooves to use your knife, but you need a very sharp knife, a very non-slippery cutting board or area on your counter to cut them because it's very hard and it can be very dangerous if you don't work safe with your knife. So I know you guys can handle it. I just like being extra cautious and telling you guys. So that's what it looks like. Here's what it looks like after we cut it. Now this one for this recipe, I am not going to peel. You could totally peel it if you want to, but the original recipe that I saw the Pioneer Woman uh, do, she did not peel them. So I'm not going to peel them either. I never have, and it works out fine. They are a little bit tougher of a peeling. You can eat them. Normally the squash gets so 
a tender by the time it's cooked then I just scoop it out and leave the peeling but it's just totally up to you so now I'm going to go ahead the next thing I'm going to do is show you how I prep the butternut squash for the oven and this will do afterwards so again I'm showing you these recipes here they can make great Thanksgiving sides or just fantastic e-meal sides if you follow Trim Healthy Mama or um, you know if you just are vegan you can these are great dishes to make as well uh, this one's a little bit different it uses butter if you don't use butter but it's still a great vegetarian dish if you do eat butter so we're going to show you how to make those starting with the butternut squash and this is all meal prep guys because i go back to work tomorrow and these will work as sides uh, for the rest of the week for us so here is my butternut squash i put it on a uh, baking sheet that i sprayed with this and then i sprayed a little bit of the cooking oil on the uh, uh, butternut squash instead of using any olive oil because I real I mean coconut oil because I realized I was out of coconut oil I have to go to the grocery store today and to pick some up so just a little bit of that and then salt just however much you prefer for your tasting you know I know some people like salt some people do not so however you think and now this is where you can alternate it up this is a savory squash it is not a sweet squash it's a little bit sweeter than like a summer squash or anything like that but it is not like a sweet potato. It's not that sweet. But we like ours flavored up kind of like a sweet potato. So I'm going to use some cinnamon. Because once you add the cinnamon in like the low carb sweetener, it honestly could pass for a sweet potato. So if you want to get some variety in your diet but not sure your kids will like it, if they like sweet potatoes, I seriously think they could like these. So you can see I just added a generous portion of cinnamon. If you wanted to keep it savory, you could um, put salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic pepper. Because I've done that before. Garlic powder. I'm sorry. And the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to sprinkle just a little bit of this Swerve Brown Sugar. So it's not sugar. It is a low call alternative. I know Carolyn and All Day I Dream About Food uses Swerve a lot. I don't get to use it very often because I don't have access to it a lot. But I found a great deal at a healthy store a little, uh, while we were on our trip this weekend for $5.99. So this is what we're going to use. Normally, I just use Trim Healthy Mama Super Sweet to sprinkle over the top. But this time, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of this brown sugar over the top. You can put as little, again, as little as or a lot. I'm just going to start out with a couple of tablespoons, maybe. And then after I get all this in there... Yeah, that's probably enough because we don't like it like super, super sweet, but we do like it to have a little sweetness and that will help. So then I'm going to toss this all together. I'm going to put it in a preheated oven at 400 degrees and I'm going to let it bake probably for 45 minutes or close to an hour, depending on how caramelized and how soft you like your squash. So in ovens will vary, but I'm going to toss this, put it in the oven and I'll come back when it's done and tell you how long I baked it and show you what it looks like. So there it is right now before it goes in the oven i'm just going to toss it so everything is coated and we'll be yeah, right so back these are steaming they're so hot I just pulled them out they've been in the oven for about mm, right at 40 minutes uh they are tender i've had them on 400 degrees so now what i'm going to do is we like a little bit of caramelization um so i'm going to kind of mix them around you can see oh sorry if the steam is making it hard and it's hard for me to do these one-handed <laughs> be easier and you can see that they have not stuck and I only use the um, olive oil spray you see how that yummy caramelization looks oh it's so good anyway so I did taste one they are getting soft I do need to add a little bit more salt probably and I am going to add a little bit more cinnamon and brown sugar but taste them and adjust however you'd like so the first thing and then what I'll do is once I get this on there I'm gonna sorry let me pull it back so the steam does it a little bit more cinnamon but these taste good as they are so you could totally leave them like this if you don't want them sweeter and I'm gonna put just probably about another tablespoon of the swerve brown sugar swerve again so it's sugar free it's not real brown sugar Now, if you use a uh, super sweet, like I do most of the time, you would not need as much as I'm using on the Swerve because the super sweet is a whole lot sweeter than that Swerve. So, just taste it as you go before you add any more. So, whoop. 
It's my oven timer and my dog. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is just stir this up a little bit more. So all of them get a little bit more of the brown sugar. And then I'm just going to spray them back out evenly in one layer. And I'm going to put them back in the oven probably for another 10 minutes or so. Just because, maybe even longer. Just because we like these brown bits because, you know, brown food tastes good. So we're going to let this cook. And you can tell how much this is cooked down already. Remember this pan was full. Now you can see space. So I am going to go ahead and finish this up. I'm going to put this back on the oven at least for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And I'm going to put those back in and I'll bring them back out when they're ready and show you guys. So I cooked them another 10 minutes and I'll take them off. I let them cool on this uh, on the sheet and you can see how they come off uh, real easy. This will be an easy cleanup. Now if you one tip, if you don't mind using aluminum foil, you can always cover your pan and roast it that way, but I just wanted to do it without. So this will clean up really nicely. And then here's what it looks like. I'm going to put it in that um, glass dish here. You can see how much that made. And I'm going to put a lid on it and put this in the refrigerator. You can see how yummy it looks. Look at that. Oh, those caramelized pieces are so good. And that is how we like our butternut squash. Another way we like a butternut squash is to do the same process, clean it out, peel it, chop it, put it in the Instapot, cook it like you would potatoes or anything, like a mash, and then drain it, and then mash it um, up, and you can use it as like a mashed sweet potato or a mashed squash dish. You can flavor it up or make it a little bit creamy with a little bit of yogurt, uh, sugar-free yogurt or anything like that, and have a yummy mash so there is that i'm going to put this in the refrigerator again because this is for our actual this is today is monday and so this is part of my meal prep monday i wanted to share about these squash dishes i was prepping and so this will be tomorrow night tuesday night dinner with a my spicy uh baked chicken in the e east uh east style and i'll put that link below too and then this is the butternut squash i had three i just prepped two of those because that's plenty for us and I'm going to finish that up now and just show you real quickly how I do that. And then those will be my two squash dishes prep for the week for our email. So let me get on this. Yum. All right. Now for the second dish. This is the acorn squash that I cut up earlier. And we're just going to make the um, topping that goes over this before we bake it at a 400 degree oven, which I have preheating. Uh, now, again, this is my version of pioneer woman's rosemary brown sugar acorn squash this would classify itself as a trim healthy mama crossover because it is going to be higher in fat and carbs so um, if you wanted to reduce the fat just take out the butter and sprinkle the brown sugar and the rosemary on it but i wanted to show you how i do it for thanksgiving as a special treat so i have one stick of butter in here a fourth of a cup of swir brown sugar and some crushed up whole rosemary leaves and this is what it looks like and you just cream this together basically oh and some chili powder i'm sorry but i have put the link to the pioneer woman's recipe uh, below so if you want to check the exact measurements uh check out down below now this is two medium um acorn squash and this is just her recipe i modified it just by um using a low carb brown sugar and i put less chili powder than she does but um just gonna taste it to make sure it tastes all right it does okay so now what you do is you actually just kind of smear this on the top of the squash and as this bakes and it doesn't have to be perfect it's not going to be you will um pull it out every once in a while and baste it you will take um the butter that melts into the pan and take it out and use a spoon and just kind of baste it over the cooking squash so i'm kind of dark it's getting kind of darker in the evening because i we went to town earlier to the store and stuff until showing you guys this a little bit later so just going to use all of the butter mixture on top of the squash 
And like I said, we're going to put this in a preheated oven. 400 degrees is what I do it at. Check her recipe to know exactly. All right, so that is that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Not paying attention to where I have you guys, so probably wasn't the best angle. So, yeah, that is that. I'm going to go ahead and I'll let you see it. I got a snare. I'm going to put it in my preheated 400 degree oven when it reaches temp and look, bake it until it's soft. Probably 45 minutes to an hour again. Halfway through, I'm going to take it out, use a spoon, and just baste it over. And then when it's done, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, so I have the acorn squash. I showed you how to put it together. I'm going to bake it for 45 minutes. Halfway in between, I'm going to baste it with the butter that is in the bottom of the pan that's flavored with the rosemary and the brown swerve sugar and the chili powder. And then it'll bake, and I'll let it cool off. I'll put it in a bowl and put it in the refrigerator uh, for one of our night's meals or lunches. And for the spaghetti squash, which was the third squash, uh, this video is getting a little bit long, so I won't bore you with that detail. Since I've already showed you my creamy sausage and pepper recipe before, I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can follow. I can't tell which way to look. Uh, that link to the video where I made that, showing you how I steamed the spaghetti squash and then uh, made the casserole. So check that link out below and I'll put a picture of it here. And I'll also include a picture of the finished squash. Maybe that's in the oven now. If not, it looks very yummy. <laughs> but stay tuned. Right after this clip, I'll show you the creamy uh, sausage and pepper casserole, which is the spaghetti squash, the third squash. And then I'll show you the finished product uh, before I get this uploaded. I hope you guys have loved this uh, video showing you how I use the three different winter squash. Also, if you give them a try, let me know. Or let me know how your favorite way is to eat those squash. As always, thank you guys so much for watching uh, My Table 3, my videos here. I hope you're having a wonderful week or weekend. I hope you had a wonderful weekend and have a great week this week. See you next time.